I've had an awesome time doing the, the, a class and I'm learning about messianic prophecies. And so today I wanted to kind of set the stage and there'll be a follow-up sermon after this. But today I just had a really fun time setting the stage for, for a future sermon message on messianic prophecies, which is really, I really enjoyed learning about that. So today, the purpose of this sermon is to show from Scripture that first, there was a prevalent expectation of a prophesied Messiah at the time of Jesus' first coming. So there's a prevalent expo expectation of a prophesied Messiah at the time of Jesus' first coming. And the second purpose of the sermon is to show that the primary purpose of the apostles' preaching was to prove that Jesus was and is that prophesied Messiah. So what you're about to experience is a fly-through of the gospel storyline, reading snapshots of scripture, highlighting messianic expectations of the people in Jesus' time. Okay? So we'll start where the New Testament starts, at the birth of Jesus. Simeon is the first character we're going to meet along the way. And here's what, what it says about Simeon. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, the prophesied Messiah. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the prophesied one. Simeon took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your prophesied salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Okay, so the words aren't up there. Um, if you're following along in here, and even if you're not, um, I'd encourage you if you want to follow along in here. The, I've, I've highlighted the words I want you to focus on. So and I've added a few words. So I've added the word prophesied in brackets. Anyways, so if you're following along, you'll, you'll see the, the highlighted pieces are what I'm focusing on. So Anna is the next character we're going to meet. So it says, then the prophet Anna, Anna gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to, to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem is a way of saying they're looking forward to the promised messianic kingdom. Then we go to the Magi. The Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one, the one, who has been born king of the Jews? They're talking about the prophesied one. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Okay, now King Herod and all Jerusalem and the chief priests and the teachers of the law. We're going we're gonna to see what they think about the prophesied one. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the chiefs, all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. The Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. And they, and then they went, proceeded to recite the, the prophecy in Micah 5.2 that tells the, the Messiah is to be born in Bethlehem. Okay, John the Baptist. Now we're move, moving, keep moving through the storyline. John the Baptist and the Jews of Jerusalem sent the priests and Levites to him, and here's what it says. Now this was John's testimony. When the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was, he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely. I am not the Christ. I am not the prophesied one. I am the voice of one calling in the desert, make straight the way for the prophesied one, for the Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him 
and said, Look, the Lamb of God, the prophesied Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God, the prophesied one. Okay, now Andrew and Simon Peter. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. In other words, the prophesied one. And he brought him to Jesus. Moving to Philip. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. A few verses later, Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel, the prophesied king, the son of David, the Messiah. Now moving on to the Samaritan's well. Sorry, the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. This is the well that Jacob uh, gave to Joseph. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. I am the Messiah, I am the Christ. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ, the prophesied Messiah? So you're getting the flavor. We're, we're moving through, and we're looking at all of the different characters in the storyline and, and, and highlighting anywhere where the characters have a, a significant expectation of the one that was prophesied, the savior of the world, the king of the Jews, the one who will bring eternal peace, all these things. Okay, moving on. The people of Sychar. So these are the, the woman at the well went to back to her village, her village is Sychar. And she said, and, and, and so after they came, they said to the woman, after the a couple days of, of Jesus preaching to them, te teaching them, they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the savior of the world, the prophesied savior. So now we have some people gathered in Jerusalem for a feast of tab tabernacles. Some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, isn't this the man they're trying to kill? Here he is speaking publicly, and they're not saying a word to him. Have the authorities really concluded that he is the Christ? In other words, have they concluded he's the one prophesied in the Old Testament, the, the king of the Jews, the Messiah? So then we have some doubters and some believers. Doubters first, but we know where this man is from. When the prophesied Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So these are doubters. Now we have some believers. They say still many in the crowd put their faith in him. They said, when the prophesied Christ comes, will he do more miraculous signs than this man? On hearing his words, some of the people said, surely this man is the prophet. And by saying the prophet, they're referring to the prophet like Moses, the Deuteronomy prophesies, and that's well understood to be prophesying Messiah. So they're clearly referring to him as that prophet. Others said he is the Christ, the prophesied Messiah, but still others doubted. They asked, how can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not scripture say that the prophesied Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Well, they got that part right, but they assumed that Jesus wasn't born in Bethlehem, so they didn't get it quite right. And so it led to doubt when they actually understood the prophecy, right? They just didn't trust and, and pursue a little deeper to find the real truth. So we have a couple of blind men, and here's what they say. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, 
have mercy on us, son of David. Son of David is a, a very clear reference to the Messiah, since Messiah is the prophesied to be the son of David. So now we have John the Baptist and uh, the disciples and the crowd and everybody who witnesses this interaction. This is actually John, the, the, John's disciples. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples in, to ask him, are you the one who was to come, the prophesied Messiah, or should we expect someone else? Jesus responded by asking them, his disciples and John himself, to observe what they see and hear Jesus doing and compare that with what scripture prophesies the Messiah would come and do. So that's how Jesus responded to that question. So the crowd that witnessed Jesus heal a demon-possessed man, keeping him moving through the story, We're moving at a pretty fast pace. All the people were astonished and said, could this be the son of David? Again, son of David is a reference to the, the prophesied Messiah. Now we have the disciples in the boat, and Peter gets out and walks on the water, starts to sing, Jesus pulls them up out of the water, they come back in the boat. The wind's calmed and the disciples are amazed. And they worship him saying, truly, you are the prophesied son of God. Then Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They reply, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, the prophesied one. Two blind men, two more blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard Jesus going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David. The prophesied son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. So now we have a, a bunch of worshipers gathered for Passover. This is the triumphal entry. So we're moving fast. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, to the son of David, the prophesied Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In case we're confused about who they're suggesting that he is here, the story continues. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, Jesus did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David. In other words, they were calling him the prophesied Messiah. The chief priests and the Pharisees, teachers of the law, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Now, later that week, we have the final confrontation with the Pharisees. Jesus asked them, what do you think about the prophesied Christ? Whose son is he? They said, we got this. We know the answer. He said, the son of David. They replied, okay, son of David. Clearly, he's the prophesied Christ. They, they got that right. But then Jesus used messianic prophecy, prophecy to point out their blindness and error in their understanding of Messiah. We'll talk about this next time, but their error was they didn't believe that the Messiah would be God. They thought it was an earthly Messiah, so they were blinded and in error. And Jesus pointed that out using prophecy. He used prophecy to help them, well, they didn't see it, but to point out their blindness and their error. And at the conclusion of that interchange, Matthew says, no one could say a word in reply. Because Jesus was right, and he was using scripture. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And now we're moving on to the trial. The first trial before the high priest. The high priest said to him, 
I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God, the prophesied one. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to you, in the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. He's quoting from Daniel 7, 13. Another messianic prophecy. Now we're at the trial before Pilate. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, the murderer, or Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They answered, crucify him. Sorry, Barabbas, they answered. Sorry, I lost my place. So they answered Barabbas. They wanted him to release Barabbas. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Now he's on the cross, and above his head they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. In other words, the king of the long-awaited messianic kingdom. We have a centurion. After Jesus' death, here's what, what it says, that when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Now where Jesus is, is risen, he's making his appearances to the disciples. The first appearance is, well, one of the appearances, first in Matthew, is the disciples on the road to Emmaus. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus said to the disciples, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things, and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Then he appeared to the eleven, and he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Okay, so we're, we've made it to the end of the Gospels. Now, I, I wanted to point out John's purpose statement for writing his Gospel. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. So this is John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, i.e. the prophesied one, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Those gathered, now we're moving into Acts, and we have a gathering on the day of Pentecost, and Peter, after the, the, the tongues, people speaking in tongues, Peter speaks a sermon, and he concludes his sermon with this. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. So this is the, the conclusion, the point, the most important thing of his, God, of his sermon. God made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Later we have a, um, after, the, after Peter, 
Peter and John are put in prison and they're persecuted by the, the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin and they're questioned and said, don't preach in this name anymore. And they're kicked out. After all of that, it says this, day after day, even after being told not to do this by the Sanhedrin, day after day in the temple courts, so very publicly in the temple courts, and from house to house, the apostles never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ, the prophesied Messiah of the Old Testament. Okay, now we have Stephen, the first martyr. I wanted to put more of his, his sermon in here, but... I. Time, just couldn't put it all in. Very interesting sermon. But at the conclusion of his sermon, he says this. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of of the righteous one, the promised one, the prophesied king. And now you have betrayed and murdered him, the righteous one, the prophesied coming king. So your fathers killed the ones who predicted he would come. Now he came and you killed him. Pretty hard words. And uh, yeah, that was... Pretty much the last words he said before he was stoned. So now Paul, who was there at Stephen's stoning, he's converted on the road to Damascus. And then this is what it says. After being converted and his blindness removed from his eyes, it says at once Paul began to preach in the synagogues in Damascus that Jesus is the prophesied son of God. He grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the promised prophesied Christ. So that was Paul's message. Now fast forward to the end of Paul's journey. He's been arrested. He's done all his missionary journeys through Turkey and Greece, and now he's back. He's been arrested and now he's before King Agrippa. This, I think this is his third trial. So then King Agrippa, so he's given his testimony to King Agrippa. He says, so then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, the vision he received on the road to Damascus. First to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and to the Gentiles also, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. That is why the Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But I have had God's help to this very day. And so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen. That Christ, the prophesied Christ, would suffer. And as the first to rise from the dead, would proclaim light to his own people, and to the Gentiles. I'm going to give you a little bit more of this one because I think it's very interesting. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Notice this is Festus, not Agrippa. Festus interrupts. You are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus. Paul replied to Festus, what I am saying is true and reasonable. The king, King Agrippa, is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul's trying to convert King Agrippa here. This is amazing. Paul replied, short time or long, I pray that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for my chains. His boldness is incredible. 
Okay, so in the final chapter, on the final page of the book of Acts, this is where we're going to end our journey today. Paul witnesses to the Jews in Rome. And uh, it says, from morning till evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets, that Jesus was and is the prophesied Messiah. So in conclusion, hopefully this has helped you to see more clearly from Scripture that there was a prevalent, deep expectation of a prophesied Messiah at the time of Jesus' first coming. And that the primary purpose of the apostles' preaching was to prove that Jesus was that prophesied Messiah. And the primary purpose of each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Luke who wrote Acts, you can, strong argument can be made that the primary purpose of all of those is to prove that Jesus is the Messiah predicted in the Old Testament. And that the kingdom of God, and to declare the kingdom of God, the king is here, declare the kingdom of God. And then kind of a third is to to to, to cause, to affect, to um, belief, so that you'll believe this, and action. You'll take action because of it. Okay, so um, this is really an intro. This whole thing is an intro. I what I want where I want to get is to working my way through those messianic prophecies, which I've never done before. Um, Micah preached through the book of Matthew, spent two years doing that. Um, that was, we, we spent a lot of time in Matthew in this course that I, that I finished and a lot of time going through the Messianic prophecies. And I'm going to bring both of those together because Matthew does that. He, he brings in a lot of Messianic prophecies. He's a Jew and he's, his message is that primarily it's a Jewish message to a Jewish audience because he's out to convince the Jewish people who have a good understanding of the messianic prophecies to convince them that Jesus is the fulfillment, the Messiah, the King, the son of David. Uh, Matthew starts uh, uh, saying the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That, that right there is a messianic prophecy. So next January, I'll do a follow-up sermon and we'll work our way through kind of the progressive revelation of who this Messiah might be from the Old Testament scriptures. And as Micah pointed out today, you're not going to know. It's hard. I mean, they're not clear. But when Jesus shows up on the stage, you can say, aha. That, that's when it really becomes clear. But there is a certain amount that they could have known and they did know. And so that's what worked out. How much could they have known and did they know from Messianic prophecy? And so I really, really enjoyed that. And I'm going to hopefully get a chance to share with you what I learned. Thank you. <laughs>